Hey folks, how's it going? I am today doing a review of the newest animated film from Skydance Animation. Actually, this is their debut film. It is called Luck. I'm sure several of you right now are scratching your head being like, yeah, I saw the marketing for this, but where do I watch it? Where, where, where can I watch this movie? Apple TV. Comments, I want to know right now, how many of you have Apple TV? I, I feel like it is an exception for folks to have that streaming service. Most people have Disney Plus, Netflix, and well, once was HBO Max, but that remains to be seen uh, in lieu of recent press releases. But Apple TV, it's like, oh yeah, these guys, they, they do movies, they, they have content, they're trying to stream. And the main thing that comes to mind for me, uh, two things actually, when it comes to Apple TV is Prehistoric Planet and then Wolf Walkers was on there years ago. Wolf Walkers is amazing, by the way. Go check that out. So is a Prehistoric Planet. But for luck, there's been such a development, I wouldn't say hell, kind of, <laughs> let's call it development heck, where Skydance Animation is a new division of Skydance itself, which they've been in the industry for like, I think 16 years now, and them trying to get into the animation bracket is a new development. I think it was launched back in 2017. I didn't pay much attention to it, but uh, things started to pick up when a certain name was brought in to be the head of animation for this division, and that is John Lasseter. So for those who don't know, John Lasseter was one of the big three of Pixar. He was one of the original founders, he was one of the original creators, he was involved with Toy Story, he was involved with like a ton of the films from like the 2000s during that golden era run for Pixar. And John here, there was sexual misconduct allegations thrown around. I don't wanna get caught in the weeds. Long story short, he left Pixar and that issue still follows him. It's enough to make folks go, oof, I don't wanna work with that guy. And for Skydance, they originally brought on some folks who left when John joined up with their team, uh, which should tell you a lot about, I guess, the state of like the industry where, I mean, John's a powerful person. He has quite the network, he has quite the pull. And you've got John now as the head of this division for Skydance. He's bringing on Brad Bird, who is the director of The Incredibles. Uh, you got Rich Moore, who is joining up with Skydance as well, now working under John. Uh, Rich Moore was the director for Zootopia. So it's like, okay, there are some big names going to Skydance. Uh, but it's just, it, it's an interesting situation to have John as the head of the division. Uh, is it a liability? Yeah. Uh, but I guess there's enough money on the table for Skydance and Apple to go, eh, we don't know. We don't know what happened, but be that as it may, that storm still follows John. And I find it to be very curious that you have folks in Hollywood who are like, ah, yeah, I'll join anyway, it's okay. And then other folks who are like, nope, I'm leaving. Now, apparently um, the original director of Luck was Alessandro Carloni, or they were the director of Kung Fu Panda 3 and they were going to direct Luck, but they stepped down over creative differences. And the person who stepped in for them is Peggy Holmes, who like she directed on sequels for Disney for like uh, The Little Mermaid 3, I think, and some of the Tinkerbell films. So. Peggy Holmes is the director for this film. And as far as the writers go, you got like Jonathan Abel, Glenn Berger, and Keel Murray, who none of their names, I'm like, yeah, I know exactly who they are. They've been involved in like Pixar films, Disney films, so they have experience. All right, I'm talking way too much about like the logistics behind this all. Let's talk about the film itself. So the synopsis for luck, it takes place in the modern day. You got this girl named Sam. She's at an orphanage. She just turned 18. Uh, she never found her family. She never got adopted. And she has a friend, a little girl named Hazel, who lives there. Hazel's like, I want to get adopted. Uh, I hope these folks who are supposed to show up actually do. I hope I'm not like you, Sam, where your folks never showed up. I don't want to be like you. I don't want to be unlucky. Sam here is unlucky. She's just always having the worst luck. Oh, her sandwich fell down or she tripped or her clothes ripped or something. It's so unlucky. And despite her having like a wonderful singing voice or how when she got uh, kicked out of the orphanage, they gave her like a free apartment, a free job, online schooling. It's like, wow, so unlucky. Ah, I, I, I wish I was unlucky as you to get a free apartment in a city. How unlucky. I, I'll talk about this here in a bit. The entire idea of like luck to me is such a strange concept. And I, I, I feel like I'm too cynical to ignore 
the logistics behind it. I'll, I'll get to here in a bit. So Sam finds a lucky penny because she like gives some of her panini to a black cat and the black cat like ran away and left a penny. Turns out this penny is like very lucky and Sam's like, wow, I'm so lucky with it. I have to give this penny to Hazel, the little girl, so she can have it and her parents will show up and adopt her because that's luck. That's how it operates. It just gives you a luck buff. And in the process, the penny's lost. The cat's like, I have to go find the penny. By the way, the cat can talk. The cat's like, I need that penny. That penny was for me. I'm going back through this portal to luck world. Sam goes with the cat, she sneaks through and she finds herself in this world where there's good luck and bad luck. It's like generated through a machine. And the good luck world has like leprechauns, ladybugs. It's run by like the CEO who's a dragon, I guess a luck dragon. There's the bad luck world. It's like symmetrical with the world, like floating in the ether. You know, ether, whatever you want to call it. And the bad luck world is like goblins and goats and roots. And it's all about like, yeah, each um, side of the coin here of this floating world, uh, the good luck's generated and the bad luck's generated. And it's required for the world and we have to oversee it. And uh, all this, again, like world building involved. It kind of reminds me of like Monsters, Inc. I I'm Paleo mentioned that in his review for this movie. And I agree, it's like, okay, it's, this is this quirky world of how things operate. And there's a lot of exposition to explain it, which is fine. But to me, there's a certain point where I'm like, it sounds like what you're trying to explain is, is complicated and convoluted and doesn't work as well as you think it does. Monsters collecting screams, it's like, okay, I can follow. It's kind of dumb, but also like, I, I can turn my brain off and enjoy this, whatever, let's have some fun. But for the luck and bad luck, for good luck and bad luck, it's like, how do you quantify that? How do you rationalize that? Oh yes, bad luck exists. And unfortunately, you know, there's bad luck and then there's like bad luck. And I feel like this movie kind of ignores bad luck. Like there's bad luck, like, oh, I missed the bus or um, my shoe, it, it broke. And then there's bad luck, like you just got fired or it's stage three pancreatic cancer, you know? Again, I'll talk about that here in a bit. So Sam goes in disguise as a leprechaun. She's a tall leprechaun and everybody buys that. Humans aren't supposed to be in this world, yet they don't <laughs> realize there's a human in their world. I think it's pretty obvious, whatever. Sam is trying to find the penny. The cat's trying to find the penny. This movie is so long, by the way. The pacing to me is slow, in my opinion. Uh, around halfway, I'm like, I'm kind of getting bored. Like, can we get to the point here? They're like, hold on, we have to keep explaining the world a bit more. And it's like, I, I get it, okay? It it's luck and bad luck. You make good luck and bad luck. I, I get it, kind of, enough, I suppose, not really, but just get on with it. Because to me, Sam as a character is, she kind of feels weak. I think she's very simple. Uh, and I, that's a shame too, because I feel like if you're talking about luck, good luck and bad luck, you can bring up this entire thing of like, yes, there's luck, it exists, but there's also like the human spirit of, of persevering. And the film kind of touches on that with Sam's like ability to endure, where she's like, I keep having bad luck, but I keep pushing forward, kind of, you know, just to keep trying and, and never give up. And it's like, okay, that could work, but, then there's this entire thing of like, you need bad luck in your life. Like bad luck's required in order to make you find the good times. And again, it's like the, the film alludes to this softly. You have to endure, okay? Like really just rip the bandaid off, go hard, just completely devastate her. I feel like Sam is never truly devastated enough. She's more bummed out like, I'll never get this penny to Hazel who will never be adopted. And it's like, I think Hazel would've been fine if you didn't interfere whatsoever. Like, leave it alone. She would've been fine. And uh, like, if you're talking about good luck and bad luck, like bring Sam really low. I mean, just completely obliterate her. Not like to like a morbid degree, but if you wanna get with bad luck, like have her get fired, have her get dropped out of school, have her just get completely raked across the coals. And then that's when like her being able to endure resonates more with me because to me enduring isn't as impactful when it's like i can endure i dropped my sandwich but i'll endure oh i uh, dropped a bucket on the ground for my job or i lost a cart and i'll endure it's like you've got good bad luck like it's almost like privilege bad luck versus like actual bad luck which is what i was kind of expecting they were very soft-handed about that 
because uh, I'm like, I rewatched the film and I'm like, what's the theme here? What are you trying to say? And there's a moment where like the black cat who, surprise, surprise, is actually unlucky because the cat's like, I'm a, a good luck, <laughs> like black cat from Ireland or something. And in reality, it's like, you're in disguise. You're actually a black cat who stole a penny of your own. And now you're trying to be good luck. Okay, there's a scene where the black cat's talking to Sam, being like, listen, all right, you endure and you're compassionate. And that's the theme of this movie. Also, you have to pivot with the bad luck. And you need bad luck, because sometimes bad luck can make good things happen. Okay, because at the end of the film, this luck dragon, she's like, hey, um, I actually have two good luck stones. We can put it in our machine and only good luck will ever come out of it. We don't need good luck and bad luck with some you know, kind of like universal law of like distribution of luck or the yin yang of it all. Um, we'll just have good luck and that's it. And Sam's like, no, we need bad luck because bad luck can lead you to good things. And it's like, okay, well, it sounds like bad luck doesn't, it, it, there's bad luck, good luck, and then there's good luck, bad luck, and then there's just good luck, and then there's just bad luck. It's like, what is happening? What, it, this is confusing. I think it would have been much more impactful if Sam's like, I don't care about your good luck. I don't care about your bad luck. I'm just gonna do me no matter what. And I will persevere and I will fight forward. And even if I get completely obliterated, I'll get back up on my feet and keep going. That would have been more impactful. And they kind of tiptoed into that where Sam has bad luck and she tries to endure. But to me, the bad luck isn't as bad as she thinks it is. And her enduring isn't, like she's not really rising to the challenge. It's, it's just more of a, what can you do? Keeps moving forward. So overall, as far as like the story goes, and I, had to, I have all these notes here, I really do. And I wanted to get more into it, but like I feel that I'm just speaking my truth. I feel that the entire premise of this film doesn't really work. Cause I feel like good luck and bad luck, controlling it, being able to distribute it, even if it's a randomizer, there's like some randomizer factor or some machine with this unicorn who banged the dragon, by the way. There's no denying that. That just, it just feels so cumbersome and awkward. It doesn't really do the narrative any favors. Cause I feel like just, if it, you can have the ability to create good luck for the entire world, then create good luck for the entire world, provide it. And it's like, no, people must suffer. They must feel the pain. Let bad luck exist. Uh, and I, I can say this though, Sam as a character, pretty plain, both visually and when it comes to her as a person. I mean, I'll tell you this though, she looks like she's from like an SFM, you know, sidebar from a reputable website, if you know what I, what I mean. She also, she's a character from a mobile game ad. There's nothing about her that seems very distinguished. She seems very plain in her presentation and in her design. And the design's not poorly done as in like on a technical scale, cause like her jeans, the cat's fur, there's, there's parts of the world with the world building as far as like the setting goes. I'm like, that's pretty cool looking, I like that. But Sam, okay, I'll be real with you. Um, Sam here, where's bad luck stored? It's stored in the butt. I'm, I'm not being facetious and I'm not trying to be lewd or, or crude or whatever, but look at her butt. That was, come on, guys, come on. That butt, uh, you definitely put some emphasis into that. For a girl who's got bad luck, she had some pretty good luck with the genetic lottery. Visually, it's competent, serviceable. Story-wise, I thought it was kind of basic. Could have been more. And this entire notion of like, what is luck? How do you quantify it? How does it work? How is it distributed? It just seems odd to me. It just feels like it's like, I don't know. It removes a lot of the impact of these characters and what they're about. It's like, is this predestination? Do we have no choice? Are, are, is our fate already decided? I just, I don't know. I guess for something like Monsters, Inc. with like the screams and the monsters and the kids, that's a lot more of like a two-way street. But luck actually impacts you as a person, it changes what happens, the outcomes of your life. And to have bad luck, it's like, yeah, I can build character. And you can use that in the story as a theme, but I felt like this film could have done a better job using that trait. But also I gotta remind myself that this is, you know, I wouldn't say it's a kid's film, but kids are definitely a demographic that was considered while making this film. You didn't wanna make it too dark. I feel like if you got really dark with a film like this, where it's like, no, here's why bad luck is bad and you just destroy Sam, then I'd be like, that's more interesting to me. Let's see if she can rise to the occasion and really overcome this, where her as a person can keep fighting forward. And it's like, no, she actually just tied her shoelaces the wrong way. Ha, bad luck, I have the worst luck. I'm going back to my apartment that's paid for. It's like, okay, yeah, really bad luck, let me tell you. I mean, the voice acting's fine, music's fine, visuals are fine, story's kind of basic, themes feel like they're kind of wasted and, 
and not as good as it could have been. I hope that Skydance can field some better contenders, because as of right now, this is not a spectacular entry into the field. It feels kind of weak, and I expect better, especially with all the folks who are involved, but hey, maybe they're just now getting their feet up and running. Uh, this film apparently cost $140 million to make and had some theatrical releases, but not a lot. And then the rest of it's on Apple TV. But again, like Apple TV's got deep pockets, so I suppose we'll wait and see what happens next. Oh, I want to say this. If we're talking about good luck and bad luck in characters, Eugene from Hey Arnold is infinitely more interesting to me than Sam. I feel like Eugene is like, he's got bad luck, but he's like, I don't care. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep a smile on my face. Like my friend said, you have to have a rainstorm in order to see the, the pot of the gold at the end of the rainbow or whatever she said. Lizzie, what'd you say? Something like that. But for Eugene from Hey Arnold, he's got bad luck, but he just keeps going and going and going. And that's a testament to his character of persevering. And he has real bad luck. While Sam, it's like, I have bad luck. And I'm like, not, not really. You've got inconveniences, not the bad luck you think it is. So yeah, those are my thoughts about luck. I'm curious to see what you all think. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments and I'll see you all next time.